to today's tutorial on keyframing. First, we're going to set up the project and then I'm going to teach you how to keyframe. So first up, we're going to open up the uh, project folder and we're also going to create it. So WHS TV 2019 20. I'm going to double click on that. Then after that, for your class, you're a first year class. So the first year folder, I'm just going to choose one of these uh, class periods. I'm try 3B. Or, of course, you know, if you were 2A, you would put 2A. So imagine I'm in 3B or 2A. doesn't matter um, which one as long as it's your specific class. On here, um, there's some groups that had their names in them. So, of course, um, on yours, you already have your names on your folder for your group. So imagine I'm this group with these people. So I'm going to double click on that icon. And with this one, it has one project in it. So, of course, I'm going to make a new folder So because I'm starting a new project. Um, and, and again, with this, you want to keep the whole group in mind. So in order to make a new folder, you're going to click this gear right here. Again, this gear, it'll usually have the word action under it. I click it and then I want a new folder. All right. So again, I'm clicking this gear to pull up these options so that I can create a new folder. I click on new folder for this one. We're going to keep it simple. Black history project. All right. So after you type in black history project, I want you to double click on it. Now, everybody should know this, but there's two folders that go inside of every project folder. This is the black history project. Therefore, it's a folder and it's the black history project folder. So with that said, I'm going to make I'm going to click here again because I want to create a new folder. Um, the first folder that you want to create is the content folder. Then after that, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it this way again. I'm going to click this gear. Um, to get the new folder option, I click on that and then I'm going to make a project folder, um, files folder. OK, for my project files. So now the other thing that I'm going to add um, in this content folder later on today, you'll be able to download all of your uh, pictures uh, and your um, audio or your music. You'll be able to download all of that. And you want to put that, of course, in um, your own special folder for your own uh project yeah because y'all are all doing different people so with that said um for mine since i'm the first one um i'm gonna do mine on barack obama so with this said in the content folder where i'll be putting all of my content i'm gonna put the name obama so of course later on you can put all of your stuff in there that you downloaded offline but for right now um I already downloaded a picture, so I'm going to put this picture in there um, because we'll need it for this tutorial. All right. Um, got my Obama image that I downloaded um, before this tutorial and for the purpose of this tutorial. So you're not confused later on. I'm going to drag that in there um, and actually to be even more organized. I'm going to make a new folder titled pictures. And I'm going to drag that inside of there. It's very important that you keep all of this organized. If you have pictures, music, you want a folder for all of that so that you know exactly where it is so it doesn't get lost. So that is that. So um, the next thing that I'll be doing now that I have my project fo um, files folder, I have my project folder set up, I'll be opening up Premiere. All right. So we're going to open up Premiere by clicking, if I can find this mouse, clicking on the rocket ship, which is also called the launch pad. Then I'm going to go over to where Premiere is and we're going to let that load. All right, so Premiere is loaded, and at the start of it, as we all should know, this is the opening screen. So I'm going to create a new project, of course. So with this one, I'm going to call it the Black History Project. Um, and with this one, what you can do is um, you can also maybe put your group's uh, color that's at your table. So imagine, let's say that I'm a part of the red group. So with this, I would label it Black History Project Red Group. And then you want to put your class period. So I said I was in 3B. So 
I'll put 3B at the end. So it should read Black History Project Red Group 3B. All right, so I'm going to click the Browse folder because I want all of my project files, which are the purple Premiere profiles, to be saved in this project files folder. So the first step to do, or actually the only step, or one of the only steps um, to doing this is again, I'm sorry, I click Browse. All right, that pulls this up. Premiere Pro is asking you, where do you want to save this? So um, I'm saying that I want to save, or I want to save all of my project files in my project files folder. So I can select that folder by either doing it the hard way, which is by going on here, going in WHS TV, and going all the way, you know, to navigate. I don't want to do all of that. The easiest way to do it is to take this project files folder, drag it and drop it on here. By doing that, it automatically selects this exact folder again by dragging the folder and dropping it on there. All right, so now I'm gonna click choose and then I'm open up my project files folder um, for visual purposes. So after that, I already have it named, I already have the location of this um, project saved to my project files folder that I just created. So now after I click OK, what you can see is that over here in my finder window now, this is created Black History Project Red Group 3B. That's very important because you want to know exactly where your stuff is being saved. If you don't, it's going to be hard to find it, and we're going to be working on this for a few days at a time. So the next thing, now that I have my folder set up for, the, for this project, which we already did um, in the last step, I set up the project by doing that. So now the next thing is the, are, are the sequences, all right? So everybody in your group or everybody that's working at the exact computer that you're at need to have, um, need to make their own sequences at this time, all right? So um, how to make a sequence? The easiest way is to first go up to file, go down to new and then click on sequence all right there's also a command if you press the um the buttons command and in at the same time it'll also open up a new sequence so i'm gonna click on it and this screen pops up so what you should see is um the setting over here or the preset should be set at dslr 1080p 24 frames per second that, that's what that 24 stands for so again what you should see is this um digital slr this uh folder right here then it should drop down to 1080p that's the size of the video that you'll be making and then out of those options in this 1080p folder it's dslr 1080p 24 frames per second if it's not there and if it's blanking on something else then what you can do is look for that digital SLR folder and look for the 1080p folder that's inside of it. And you can click once on the DSLR 1080p 24, which is 24 frames per second. After that, this is the final part of creating a sequence. So with that said, imagine that I'm group member number one and my name is Robert. Um, I'm going to I'm going to type in for mine. Um, I want to type in my famous person or my black history figure. So mine is Obama. So I'm going to type in the name Obama with yours. You can put the full name or an abbreviation, but um, you want that in there. So actually, you know what? We're going to add this. I'm going to say Justin Williams. All right. And I'm going to do an underscore. You can also do a space. Um, but Justin Williams underscore Black History Project underscore Obama. So with this, this is a better way of doing it. Put your name, Black History Project, and Obama. This is or the person that you're you're doing yours on. This is important because the sequence name automatically pops up in the uh, in the export process. So so you don't have to think about naming it instead it's already there so i'm gonna press ok so at this point in the video i want each group member that's right by you that's in that room um, the editing bay to make their own sequence all right 
Don't move forward until everybody has made their own sequence. So, for example, I'm going to do it along with you. So I'm going to follow that same process. So file, new, and then sequence. All right. So on here, I'm the next person, and this is already set. So you don't have to redo it and find the digital SLR and 1080p and DSLR 1080p. It's already there for you. So with that said here, um, following that same format, I'm going to put, uh, let me see, I'm going to put Cam Johnson. I'm just making up a name, underscore Black History Project. And let's see, she's going to be doing hers on uh, Martin Luther King. Hopefully y'all aren't, well, it's nice to do it on him, but choose somebody different that we don't know too much about. Click OK. Then the next person, they're going to do theirs on, let's see, sequence. Then for this one, we have Amanda... Uh, Amanda Jones, like the J's, uh, underscore black history project, and then underscore Madame CJ Walker. There we go. So with this, you may have four people in it, but after you create each of these, they'll all pop up down here and they'll also be over here. All right. So that's step one. So actually, if you want to, um, after you have all of these uh, timelines or sequences for your group members over here, whether it shows these boxes of each sequence or whether it shows um, it like this where it's you know just like the, the little streak or the little columns um, and again that's changed by these two icons down here this is list view this is icon view so i'm gonna go back to list view and on here um, i can click down with my mouse and then still holding the mouse in the click position i drag up you notice that's why this box is being made so after these are selected I can actually take, and I would do this by the icon, not the name, not this little marker over here that has a color, but I would drag it by this icon that I'm circling over, and I can drag it to a bin. And so it puts it all in a bin, and so I'm just going to simply name this sequences all right because it has all of the sequences in it all right so now that we have a folder for the, the sequences it's good just for um, organizational purposes so going back to my original one um, I'm going to start making my stuff for it so I'm also going to make my own folder um, so on here or my own bin so on here I'm gonna call this one Obama there we go, because that's my person. All right. So um, for this bin, um, of course, I clicked on it. And at this point, whatever you make, you want to be able to put in that bin or you want to put in that bin just to keep it organized so everybody's stuff isn't mixing. All right. So this is the next part of this project for today. So you've already created your project. You've already created your sequences and everything is great. So now it's time to work and arrange everything for today's uh, keyframing. So before we start keyframing, there's a few things that I want you to create. You'll be creating the name of the person that or a title for the name of the person that you'll be doing your project on so for mine it'll be obama then after that we're going to create a title that has a fact about obama or whatever person that you're doing then we're going to import our picture and we'll have a picture of this person whoever that is for mine it'll be obama lastly we're going to add fade transitions and then we're going to export so I'm going to start off with the titles. So with these titles, you have the text tool. So this little T that I'm circling over right now, right here, let's find that. Find it with your eyeball and you got it. All right. So this T, I'm going to click on that. 
All right, that is the text tool. So now I can go over to this screen. This is called the record monitor or the record screen. So with this, and it's also called program, but um, with this folder, or not folder, but with this uh, window, I'm going to take this text tool that's now up there. If you notice, I'm moving it. It's this um, square with like a little cursor in the middle of it. I can click anywhere on the screen and then wait a few seconds, and then this little red box pops up. That's called a text box. So my first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Obama. Actually, I'm going to put his full name. Barack Obama. All right, so there we go. I got Barack Obama. That is my title. Um, so from there, let's say that I don't want to keep it right there. I want to move it to have it more centered. And this is not perfectly centered, but um, I can click on this selection tool and then I can drag it wherever I want it to be. So I'm not going to leave it perfect for this one for the sake of time, but um, it's there, right? So the other thing that I can do is you have these pins in the corner. Right. I wouldn't choose these at all, but only the corners. Right. So with this, I can click and drag and I can make it bigger and then I can rearrange it wherever I want it. So there we go. I got my Obama title. So now I'm going to take this cursor down here and I'm going to move it forward. All right. So next um, I'm going to make my title for the fact for um, President Obama. All right, so again, I click on the T down here, and then I can click on here. That gives me the text box. And if you notice down here in the timeline, after you click up here and it makes the text box, it also makes the clip down here. All right, so for this one, um, I'm going to, good, that's activated. I'm gonna type in the fact that um, he was, I don't know why I did that was the first. Nah, I'm gonna type in first. First black president. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. Click the selection tool, and then I can move it wherever I would like it to be, and I can also resize it to make it bigger to my liking. And there we go, that's good enough for now. So now next, what I have is I'm gonna put my picture in there, all right? So going back to my project folder, I'm gonna open up my content folder, and then for mine it was Obama, and this is where the organization comes in. Where are my pictures, right? So here's my picture, and for this one, I only want you to put in one picture. I don't want you to download everything that you got offline right now, um, but one picture that you can easily get. So from here, I'm going to drag and drop this picture. And actually, I'm going to do it on here first. So that imports it in Premiere in this section down here. Then after that, you notice that this picture is outside of my bin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it by the icon over this, and it goes in there, right? It's in there. If I close th this bin, you can't see it. If I open it, it's right there. All right, so now that I have it in my bin, I'm gonna simply drag it by the icon over here. All right, so now I have everything in the, the, um, the, the timeline. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click between these empty spaces all right, it turns white and then I'm going to delete that. If you notice, after I clicked it, I hit delete on my keyboard and then it snapped or popped over to this other side. So that's the same thing that I'm going to do right here. Hit delete and it's going to pop over. All right, so now that I have all three clips touching each other, the next thing that we'll do is I'm going to put transitions on it. All right, so um, I'm going to go over... And again, over here, I want you to focus on this. I'm going to go over to, we got tabs, right? This is in effect. The transition is in effect. I'm going to go over to my transitions tab. In this search menu, I'm going to type in cross. All right? So with this cross transition, 
um, down here, of course, there's different things that came up because I searched it. So with that said, I want to look under video transitions because even though these aren't pictures, uh, sorry, these aren't videos, um, they're being made into one. All right. So again, these titles and this picture at the end, whenever I export it, it's going to be a video. So with that said, I need a video transition. So I can take this cross dissolve by clicking on the icon and dragging it over here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to drag it on each of these uh, endings or splits, right? And also at the end. All right. So I'm dragging it on each one of these. Boom. Dragged it on here. And I'm going to drag it on at the end with this, with these transitions, fades up, fades to the next thing, fades to the next thing and fades off. All right. So um, at this point, we have all of this. Boom. It's great. So now the next thing that I want to do and the thing that you're here for is keyframes. All right. So from here, what I will do is. I'm going to click on my first title. So with these keyframes, I want you to focus on this um, panel right here. All right, right now, um, this is the source monitor. Um, so if I click on this and I have it, and I have the effect controls highlighted or selected in these, in the, the menu up here, I'm able to see uh, all of the effects parameters that are associated to each of these right now it's just this this title right here but if i go over here and click on this one now th this one is loaded for the second title and now it's loaded for the third one so key framing here we go so i'm on my first title and what this is is making it move so with that said um i want you to think about um how you get to school right your house is at one place and then the school is at a different place so by creating key frames it's almost like a path right so i'm going from this place to this place i'm going from this size of this image or this title or whatever it is to this size um, i'm going from this place to this place so with that said we're going to focus on positioning and these are the keyframe markers right here the stopwatches all right so for any keyframes that you want to set for anything to animate anything you have these right here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on position all right. And what you know, or the stopwatch by position, you notice it turns blue. All right. Again, right here, it turns blue. And then what happens is this little diamond, which is called a keyframe, is created. All right. So with that said, um, this is where it starts. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a zoom transition or a zoom uh, keyframe. So with this, um, I'm clicking. I already clicked on this 900 value right here. All right, I'm going to click it again, and then I'm going to drag my mouse to the left. All right, and what it's doing is it's moving it to the left. So actually, this is not zooming. Um, zooming would be scale, but this is the, the position of it. So I'm moving it from left to right. So my starting position is on the left. So now I'm going to move this cursor right here forward in time. All right, because this uh, this graphic or title is about five seconds long. So as I move it forward in this five second um, amount of time, I'm going to change the position. All right. So it was fir first it was over here, but I want it to move all the way over here. All right. So then from there, I have this animation because this is home. Right. Imagine the, the Westlake scenario. This first point is the house. The second one is where you intend to go. So with that said, it moves from this one to that one. That's that's what created this um, animation. Now, the next thing is I want this to happen throughout the whole clip. OK, so um, right now, if you notice, it only happens whenever this blue cursor that I'm moving right now. It only happens when it moves across 
that uh, across these keyframes after the last key frame or after the last key frame is reached it stops moving but i want it to move the whole time so with that said i'm going to drag this first keyframe all the way to the beginning of this clip now i'm going to drag this next keyframe right here i hope you're watching i'm going to drag it all the way over there okay so what that does as i move this cursor from you know the beginning to the end of it it's going to move it all the way so that same animation is just being done throughout the whole duration of the clip okay so now i have my next one i'm gonna do this rather quickly um but i'm gonna choose the scale this time scale makes it larger or smaller so with this um, again, the first keyframe is how you want it to start. The last keyframe is how you want it to end. So I want it to start out small and I want it to get bigger. There we go. All right. So again, with this, I already made my keyframes and now I'm going to drag that to the front, that to the end. And what it does makes it bigger. So now for my last one, um, which is of the picture, I'm going to do the exact same thing. All right. I'm going to click either position or scale, whichever one that I want. I'm going to do scale for this one. And this time, I'm going to start out zoomed in on them. And this is good that this is a clear image. But um, I'm going to have it start out as a, as a zoomed in on them. So now, that's my first keyframe. My second one, I want it to end like that. All right. So again, I'm going to drag these on either side. And that drags out that. So there you go. So now we're going to play it. All right. My first title, boom, Barack Obama fades to the next one. It's beautiful. Fades to the last thing. It's beautiful. And we're out. All right. So um, that is how you make the video. So the very last thing is exporting. So I have this is perfect. It's the way that I want it good i'm on the right sequence um so it's the right thing it's the right everything that i wanted um so now i'm gonna go up to well first i'm going to make sure that this blue outline is over this timeline or sequence all right that's very important if it's not if it's over here on this then it's going to export my picture or whatever other files that i have over here if it's this it may not export anything so with that said i have this blue outline over this timeline okay that's extremely important all right so now i can go up to file i need to export it so i'm gonna go over to export and then I'm exporting media, all right? You'll never export any of these other ones um, as long as we're in here. Um, yeah, yep, for the time being. Later on, you may find out what it's used for, but you won't. But you're exporting media, all right? So I click on media, then the export screen pops up, like so. The format should be H.264. Um, your output name is the same name as your sequence name. So if you name that right in the first place, you won't have to worry about it later. So with that said, I have that, that's perfect, it's beautiful. So now the next thing and the other important thing about exporting is I need to know exactly where I'm exporting my files. If you never click on this or if I didn't, it would be exporting to this exports folder in this what some, some other folder so again i wouldn't even know where to find it and commonly people will do this not knowing and they'll be like oh i don't know where it's saved it you know it is not exporting and it's because you haven't chosen a folder to um to save it in so with that said i'm gonna go back to my project folder and for this one um this is your black history project. I'm going to make a new folder um, under the content and project files folder. And um, this one, it's going to be exports. So with this one, everybody can put their exports in it. So with this one, it's the same way as you did when you started the project. Um, I could go to WHS TV and go through all of these folders. That takes forever. So I have my project, uh, my project folder open and I'm going to drag the exports folder on here that automatically selects that folder. 
every time that you drag a folder on there, it's automatically gonna, gonna select that exact folder. So now I have the right project name from the start, so I don't have to make that up again. Click Save, and then at this point, I can export it, all right? So um, I'm gonna export it, and this is not gonna take too long at all. A few seconds, here we go, because it's not a lot of video or media content, and boom it is done all right you want to wait for that screen to go off but it is done so now if i open up my exports there's the video right there it's named correctly um double click on it and i can play it all right and i'm not gonna play the whole thing for you but that's it so um at this point you want to move on to the next person and uh the next person and the next person and the next person until you get it done um so with that said that is how to create um today's project um about key framing so with that said um alternate and use your time wisely to create this. So with that said, um, thank you for watching and um, good luck. Good luck.